Hi, I'm Neil O'Gorman from Agilent Technologies. I am the Pixit product line manager, and today I would like to introduce you the newest member of the Pixit family. We have today our N2100B Option 300. This is a 10.3 gig compliance DCA. So what's new on the Agilent N2100B DCA? Well, alongside the 10 gig compliant receiver, as I already mentioned, we have the new PON receiver or filters also. PON, 10 gig Ethernet, and fiber channel are all high growth areas, along with parallel optics. And we now provide receivers for all these markets. Also, we are launching a new feature called Smart Post Processing. This feature, like the rest of the product family is there to address the requirement of optical transceiver manufacturers that they must decrease the cost of test. Smart post processing does this by improving the throughput, decreasing the test time. This is critical for optical transceiver manufacturers. The following are the highlights of the N2100B DCA. It reduces manufacturing test time. It has a lower cost relative to alternate solutions. This lower cost comes mainly through the mainframe. It has a smaller footprint and is modular. So you can have multiple DCAs in the one chassis, or even multiple DCAs in multiple chassis. Also available in the Pixel product family are the N2101B BERT, N2102B pattern generator, and finally the N2099A synthesizer, all of which are complementary products to the N2100B DCA. Now, I will show you the 10 gig DCA along with smart post processing. First, I want to show you the following slide. Here is an example of the typical frequency response of an N2100B Option 300 DCA when the 10 gig E filter is selected. The green line is the ideal response, and the blue is the actual as determined from our impulse response measurement. You can clearly see the blue line tracks the green line extremely well. The pink lines indicate the allowed tolerances as defined by the standards. One additional point to note, of course, is that the DCA can operate up to 11.3 gigabits per second. However, the 10.3 filter is the highest compliant filter available for the N2100B. Now, let's have a look at the 10 gig I. So, here is our 10 gig signal. Uh, I've already set it up. If I hit acquire, we'll see the eye updating. This is actually a K285 signal with a compliant 10 gig reference receiver. Just to show, just to demonstrate, I will select, say, the four times fiber channel eye, which obviously is going to close the eye quite considerably. And now I'll jump back to the 10 gig eye. So there you are, pretty straightforward to demonstrate um, the new 10 gig compliant DCA. So the Pixit DCA samples at 160 mega samples a second. Typical sampling scopes have been in the order of 40 kilohertz. So we, we acquire the data quite a lot faster. In fact, Within six milliseconds, we acquire one million data points. Now, for the Pixit DCA, it's the processing that is a little bit slower because we acquire so fast. So how can we, Agilent, provide more benefits to the customer? Well, one solution is smart post-processing. The concept is, let's acquire the data now and process it later during some, maybe some dead time. Maybe there is, within the production line, there is a time where the DCA isn't being used. Perhaps, for example, when the optical transceiver is being warmed up. So, this tool is going to demonstrate how we can acquire the data, acquire another set of data, acquire even a third set, or even a fourth set of data, and then process each one. So, let me demonstrate that. Just before showing you the demo, I want to briefly show you the following. Here is an example of the stages involved in a typical optical transceiver production line. Very briefly, it consists of four stages. 
The first stage is the handling and temperature setting of the DUT. The second stage is the tuning of the extinction ratio and OMA, along with some other parameters, via adjusting the bias current and modulation voltage of the DUT. SPP is not relevant at this stage, but it's also not needed. The very fast update rate of the N2100B at about 200 to 300 milliseconds provide a very fast feedback loop to tune the required parameters. The third stage is the jitter measurement and mass test. This stage is not a feedback stage, and typically we'll use a large number of waveforms for the mass test, maybe 200 or even 500 waveforms. It is this stage that SPP is intended to help decrease the test times. Here is where the acquiring of the data will occur, but not the processing of it. Stage 4 is the BE or sensitivity test. At this stage, if performed sequentially after stage 3, the SPP's processing of the data can occur. Or the processing can occur during the handling and temperature setting of the next DUT. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up two acquisitions. One, say 100 waveforms with a 10 gig optical path, the second only 16 waveforms and say the 4 gig optical path. That way I'm clearly demonstrating to you the two different acquisitions. We know already how different they look. So this is just proving the concept that we're able to store data, in fact multiple sets of data, and then process it later. So let me go to settings one. Let me select the number of wave waveforms or blocks to be 100 and let me select a 10 gig path. So for settings 2, I want to select a different path. I'm going to select the 4 gig path. And I'm going to set the number of blocks to just 16. OK, let me hit return. Now, let's do acquire to memory. So at this stage, it's now acquired from settings 1 and the test from settings 2. And it took 1.08 seconds. Now I can load that data. I can either load it with acquire with mask or just a, pure, a normal acquire. Let's do it with the mask. So I select memory one. Memory one of course was the hundred waveforms. It takes two seconds and it's the 10 gig eye that we see. Let's now select memory two and I will do it with the normal acquire method. So we can clearly see here that that's the four gig eye. Let me select um, memory two with the mask. Okay, and again, we can clearly see it is the 4 gig path. If I click on measure, I can actually measure the EOR or the OMA. Let's have a look at test 1. So let's load the data again. There's memory 1. It's going to take a little bit longer as it's 100 waveforms. And let's measure the extinction ratio here. We get 4.5 dB. Obviously, the eye is more open on the 10 gig path than it is on the 4 gig path. In this example, there was not a huge time saving. A two and a half second test time impact has become one second. However, for 1000 blocks or waveforms, stage three can actually take up to 30 seconds. But with SPP, the impact to test time becomes just three seconds, which is effectively a 10 times improvement in test time. This, of course, does assume that the processing of 27 seconds can occur somewhere else on the production line. Now you have the information on our new 10 gig filter, including PON, and also our new feature, Smart Post Processing. If you would like more information, please go to the following link. Thank you very much for your time.